evening, everyone. I'm Ben Talkett, and welcome to the continuation of our report on particulars within mystical theology. You see, previously we discussed the 7th century practice of the rule of St. Benedict, and tonight we are going to continue that discussion. The second interaction between practice and belief that took place in this community though they were a minority, was the belief that it was possible in this life to be incorporated into the life of the Trinity. However, these insights are only available through practice, and it is now only fitting that we talk to a person who has practiced this in the past, Evagrius of Pontius. One of the earliest exponents of the radical claim of being incorporated into the Trinity. Listen in on what he has to say. If you are a theologian, you will pray truly. And if you pray truly, you are a theologian. You see, we practice the virtues in order to achieve contemplation of the inner essences, Logoi, of created things, and from this we pass into contemplation of the Logos who gives them their being, and he manifests himself when we are in the state of prayer, as I am now. However, this is not an easy process. It's definitely not for a beginner. <laughs> Your prayer is not something that is easily achieved, nor is it a possession that one can count on to endure. It's constant practice. The cunning demon is ever out to destroy or to distract. However, direct, contemplative knowledge of the Logos can only be achieved in this way. Being incorporated into the Trinity sounds pretty heretical to me. Yet Evagrius remains one of the most significant early monastic writers on this very subject. You see, he helped to inspire an understanding of real belief. But if it's not heretical, it certainly is on the edge of heresy. In fact, I submit that the next people we will be looking at were indeed heretics, Teresa and John of the Cross. In their writings, we find a very detailed account of incorporation into the life of the Trinity as a result of a transforming union. Here to help me understand all of this today is one of my closest friends, very wise and old. He's my friend from Dagobah. Yoda, it's such a pleasure to have you with us here today. A pleasure it is. You know, in Teresa's description in the seventh dwelling of the mansions, union does bring an intellectual understanding of the meaning of the doctrine of the Trinity, but it is an intellectual vision at a new and deeper level of response than previously known. Is that right, Yoda? In the extreme interior it is, in some place very deep within. So this is different from the union in the earlier life, in which unitive states are brief or physically disabling. But it could be permanently transforming. So, Yoda, what is it that she's really saying here? She sees that a higher state it is to be able to withstand lasting union without physical ecstasy or collapse. And this special knowledge of Trinity raises her to an exalted position it does. Oh, okay. So the person who passes into this union with the Trinity is required not to stray from the continuing round of bodily practices in community that mark its Christian shape. I think I'm understanding this. To do so would be a denial of the very Trinitarian revelation that had been just revealed. Is that right? A permanent incarnate reality it is. 
you know what is interesting is that John of the Cross's account, he, he seems to make a more daring claim than she did. He says that the soul can actually breathe with the very breath of the Spirit that moves between the Father and the Son. The soul is actually knit into the life of God. It's belief wholly internalized by the long practices of contemplation. And so the soul loves God and the Holy Spirit together with the Holy Spirit, not by means of Him, but together with Him by transformation. Yes, contemplation clearly now no human practice at all is, but directly infusion of divine grace. Mm -hmm. Yoda, that is absolutely fascinating. We just can't thank you enough for being here with us tonight. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Yes, a pleasure it was. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our special program for tonight. Join us again next week as the practical theologians stomp the Jacobras in a class deathmatch challenge. Thank you so much and have a good evening. <laughs>